a traditional white with purple. It will move from right to left on your screen here in the first half. The Beavers in black with, with white numbers headed back the other way. Game time temperature is a balmy 37 degrees factoring in the wind chill here on Mont Lake, and we can expect that number to drop as the night goes on. Dylan Tevez over the ball for the dogs to get things started. And the Pac-12 season officially underway. And uh, obviously, again, these teams, two for the two games for Washington, three games for Oregon State. I feel like that's very early in your season to uh, be starting conference play. But at the same time, since it is late February, I think this is uh, maybe the earliest we've ever been late. Yeah, no, no question about it. It's, uh, you know, it's an adjustment. I, I don't think any of the teams feel like they've had enough uh, you know, play under their, under their belts. And uh, so, you know, probably expected maybe a few mistakes and some tactical adjustments that later in the season will be great. Ball at the top. Adrian Fernandez going to call off his defender there. It's Joe Hafferty. Come back to Joe Hafferty. But Fernandez, obviously from Madrid, Spain, spent 10 years in the Real Madrid Academy system. And uh, one of a host of internationals in Terry Boss's starting 11, Jim. Yeah, well, uh, basically, uh, nine of the 11 are from overseas, uh, two Americans, uh, four Spaniards, two Frenchmen, uh, one from Senegal, one from South Africa, most from. If you wanted a little bit less on that, but, you know, one of the things about wind chill is it also implies high wind, which we definitely have here, and, and those balls, as soon as they kind of get out of the profile of the baseball stadium and the grandstand on the far side, the wind can really take balls at runs. Yeah, no, both goalkeepers are going to have to uh, keep that in mind, and then the prevailing wind direction is going to be uh, something that both teams are going to have to adjust to. This is Joe Hafferty. This pass goes out of play. Hafferty, one of a half dozen Pac-12 players who were selected in this year's NFL Super Draft. Of course, with the Division One season being delayed, uh, Hafferty perhaps temporarily delaying his decision to turn pro was drafted by Inter Miami, but then was traded for by Sounders FC, which uh, might make sense. He's from their academy. Ostrom trying a long throw. Miglietti can't get there. Tevez trying to chase down a loose ball. That gives you an idea of just how dangerous a long throw could be. I mean, that was really close. For, unfortunately for the Huskies, it didn't rush at their feet, but could very easily have, and you could have seen the, a, a score very early. Well, Crespo cut down along the far side there, wins an early free kick. Jim, worth mentioning, this match, the one played at Husky Stadium between these two teams last year, turned a little bit uh, heated. Six yellow cards issued, and Joe Hafferty sent off on 80 minutes. So we'll have to see if the memory is that long between these two teams. But, you know, Jim, it's one of the realities of, of Pac-12 conference play is you got rivalries with everybody. Well, look, both these teams are, are high-quality teams right now. Oregon State's ranked 22. And, and UW is ranked 16, but I think the telling statistic is four out of the last five games they've played have been one goal matches. So I would expect this to be a very tight competitive match, just like last year. Nick Scardina, his back pass to Christian Soto. And Soto just doing what he needs to to wrap up Muhammad Tiam along the far side. Crespo back to Gail Jaber, the Frenchman. Inside to Hafferty. One ball to the far side, broken up by Kai Briscoe. Briscoe, another one of those Sounders Academy products. You see, tend to see quite a few of them playing up and down the Pac 12 as well as elsewhere in the college soccer ranks. This is Crespo. Ball loose along the far alley. And that broken up for a very deep throw in for Washington. Let's go. Gone down the line. And Scardina upended by Crespo. Wins the throw in and nothing more. You know, one of the uh, things to watch for is the height advantage that the 
Husky's uh, central defense have over the smaller but very quick uh, Oregon State uh, attackers. So the question is whether they're going to serve balls in the air or whether they're going to try to bring it in low on the ground to on the ground. Attempted knock over the top. Ryan Saylor is there, picked up by Gloria Amanda. Amanda slices toward a goal. And uh, maybe you can forgive him for feeling confident. Jamie's got four goals in three matches. He's the reigning Pac-12 Player of the Week and the reigning College Soccer News Player of the National Player of the Week as well. Yeah, no, he's leading the Pac-12 with four goals. Uh, clearly, <clears throat> you know, th there are three players on Oregon State that uh, you look to in terms of shots on goals. He has 22 shots. Um, uh, Sofiane Jabal of France has 13. And then Mohamed Tiam has 12. Huskies unable to make the most of the quick ball downfield. Kai Briscoe with a chance for the throw on the far touchline. Picks out Gio Miglietti. That's knocked away by Crespo. They're going to try Joel Walker up the right side. Ostrom matches him step for step. Sailor beats him to it. Gets it back to Sam Fowler. Gets the start and goal tonight. And Miglietti, shoulder to shoulder in the air. Well, nobody pulling out of challenges early in this one, Jim. No, and I wouldn't imagine it'll happen at all tonight. That is Sofiane Jafal there, breaking up the attempted ball to Crowley. Scardina racing down the right side, flags him stay down. He crosses it early. Christian Soto doing a nice job of picking him out, delivering the ball if he can get his foot on it. Let's go. Trying to reach Tevez. Hafferty unable to get the ball clear. Scardina went for the nifty turn. Hafferty just runs right through him. And that will be too long for Gloria Amanda. Yeah, right now it looks like Oregon State is pretty content to play Route 1 soccer, just putting it over the top. We'll see if that continues during the game. Well won there by Jafal. Now it's Joel Walker. Walker at the edge of the penalty area. Slides it forward for Jafal. He's marked tightly by Sailor. His cross is skied to the back post. And has gone out of play. Goal kick. Charlie Ostrom, usually very sure-footed with the ball at his feet. That time just loses out to Jafal and it almost sparks an instant counterattack right at the edge of the defensive third. Lucas B goes up, wins the header. On by Tevez toward Miglietti. Crunching collision between two players there. Scardina trying to find Tevez in space. That was a nice idea, just not executed. Here's Tyrone Mondi. And wider still for Crespo. didn't see numbers breaking forward. You see that with this Washington team. They really do love to give themselves the green light and race ahead, but they can also be patient when they don't find the situation favorable. Oh, there's no question. You know, one of their strengths is, is their possession through the midfield. Uh, you know, in the past, they've been very high pressure. They don't seem to be doing that right yet. doesn't mean they won't. Uh, but they're very content if they don't see something to pull it back. Into the play now. Jim, one of the things I wanted to ask you about coming into this game is obviously Washington was expecting to play two matches against STU and against the University of Portland. And, and does the lack of those matches, even though it's really just a span of seven days of inactivity, contribute to 
a lack of consistency or a difficulty finding one another? Or is it still early enough in the season that you were going to struggle with that anyway? I think it's both. I think, you know, I, I, I do. I think, <clears throat> you know, I do think that, you know, there's going to be some uh, rustiness and, and some uh, lack of, of continuity and play among one another. But at the same time, you know, let's not get a restart ourselves. here. They find Scardina and Chipolo Street is going to say, no, I told you to wait for the whistle. Right. Um, This is Ostrom over this free kick. Just two in the wall. Drifting to the back post for Washington. Ostrom ships it in. Fernandez calls for it. Catches it. That was a good idea. I mean, the Huskies were flooding the area. They just didn't get ahead on the wall. The goalkeeper did a nice job. He got the people off and coming out. But as I was saying before, Despite the fact that it's early in the season, we have to give credit to the fact that this is a very good Oregon State team. So, you know, <clears throat> I wouldn't just read any problems the Huskies have in uh, lack of play. It's, really, it's one of the things that we had mentioned to us by Jamie Clark, Washington's head coach, when we were talking to him about this season and who he, you know, thought might surprise some people. In the Pac-12, he said, listen, people who are paying very close attention know that Oregon State is a very strong team, and they return most of their hardcore talent from last season. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, an interesting development to think about. Because they have some very talented players, obviously. Uh, one of them being the National Player of the Week this week. So, that tells you something. This is Miglietti. His cross blocked. He's loose in the corner. We'll let it roll onto the end line and just over for a corner. First of the match. Yeah, it was very sharp on this part just to let it go out, although it kind of looked like it wasn't going to make it over the line. Washington, Jim, as we know, so dangerous on set piece opportunities, particularly with the likes of center backs Ian Saylor and Kendall Burks available inside the penalty area. They're working just north of the 12 right now. Yeah, between Burks, Meek, and uh, Saylor, you've got three people that are over 6'3". Low ball coming in, broken up by Gloria Amanda. Pulled down. Second ball over the head of Saylor. He manages to connect with it, Jim, I should say, but just directs it too high. Yeah, I wasn't able to get up over the top and get it down. It's just a little bit too high, but <clears throat> great poise out there on the flank to uh, pull the, uh, the fake and take it to the end line to set up that cross. You see here, Washington wants to play this high press. And that's going to force Fernandez to reset this goal kick, send everyone downfield, basically put it into the mixer. Right. Meek, the initial header. Tevez. Comes behind Miglietti. Tevez cleared out. Miglietti cleared out. And referee was looking to play advantage, didn't see anyone developing. So another free kick for Washington. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair, fair to say that Washington's advantage in the air is something that is going to adhere to their benefit all day long. He's got three pretty competitive already at midfield. Ostrom over the free kick once again for Washington. It's been instructed to wait for the whistle. There it is. Driven ball to the back post. And boy, that ball just exploded off the head of center back Kendall Burks. Yeah, not quite the direction he wanted, but he definitely came off with some pace. You know, the, the quality of the Husky serves into you know, not only corner kicks, but these free kicks is very good. Um, so despite the fact they haven't scored, they're putting it where it needs to be. Pressure coming on Hafferty. Slips past the challenge. And they work it ahead to Jafal. Jafal finds Crespo. Chip through, headed away by Burks. Tavez, 
and Sailor uh, knock it clear. The Oregon State did a beautiful job that, that time of moving the ball up the pitch on the ground, you know, connecting passes, uh, not trying to go over the top. The Huskies are content to just, just defend in their half. Javier Armas gets back to Jafal. Joel Walker cleared out. Beavers carrying on here. Sam Fowler gets tested at the near post. Comes up with the save. Let me tell you something. That save right there is harder than you think because he really cracked it across. Sure hand of Sam Fowler. Not giving up a dangerous uh, rebound. Carlos Moliner getting the shot away. Fowler with his first action of the night. Tevez brings that ball down nicely, but is hemmed in here by Hafferty. Gone ahead for Miglietti. Miglietti doing battle with Chabert. They both go down, and Miglietti wrapped him up. Yeah, that's the kind of gritty, competitive soccer that we've grown to expect when we watch OSU. Here's Miglietti, the six foot junior out of Hawthorne, California, and Sanders Academy product, also not afraid to throw his weight around. It's one of the things that Jamie Clark likes so well about his game. But he's got great body control, and, and that's really critical for kind of a target forward. Joel Walker won the header. It appears he's won the free kick as well. See what Moliner chooses to do. He'll play it simple. You know, the pitch looks in, in, in pretty good shape. Um, you know, it's been uh, played on quite a bit in the last couple of weeks, including uh, the beginning of a snowstorm. So, nice to see the grounds crew doing such a great job on the pitch. And I applaud it to Larry Nocter and his whole team. In fact, the pitch was in use as recently as this afternoon as the Husky women took down Seattle Pacific University 2 0. More on that in a moment. Molliner's cross headed away. Armas. Cross over seconds to Javert. Again, Huskies taking down Seattle Pacific University 2 0. First time in 20 years they've met in an official competition. Obviously, SBU playing in the Division II Great Northwest Athletic Conference. Based only about a 20-minute drive away at Inner Bay Stadium. Well, you know that, and, and then they also had a game against Seattle View that wasn't originally scheduled, but then was because you know you've got these great programs right here, and so it's really good for both men and women's uh, team at University of Washington to have such high-quality local soccer that they can you know, engage at the last minute. This is Tyrone Mundy. Ground square for Moliner. Forced backward by Meek. And Jim, so far, if you're someone who's able to appreciate the art of team defending, this game's been a delight to watch. Both these teams so coordinated at their back end and all the way front, you know, just straight through the forwards. There has not been much room to work for either side. Yeah, no, they're very organized. And uh, they pick their spots. You know that's that's important. You know then you also have absolutely relentless defenders like Lucas Meek, who in the match last week was is just indefatigable uh, intensity created two goal scoring opportunities for himself. And a lot of teams 
He's kind of like, yeah, well, he's not, you know, he's not that fast. Well, he's very deceptive. And he yeah. is Vince Cardina there, pardon me, Jim. Uh, and relentless is something I know Coach Fox absolutely loves about He needed just seven minutes to do that great race. That 3 0 win against Gonzaga. Relatively impressive feat, bested only by Nick Scardina's 12 minute hat trick against Northwestern University two weeks ago. And of course, for that, Scardina earned Pac 12 Player of the Week. Plaudits. So, well, you know, we're talking about it. You have evidence. There's no shortage of talent out on the pitch. No doubt. And Scardina, those were his first three goals. So, score his first three goals and on a inside of 12 minutes is really impressive. And you see Fowler's kick getting held up by the wind, like we mentioned earlier. He brings this down. Pressure on his back. Joel Walker. Does enough to get the ball off. Miglietti has it back for Washington. Ball will come toward Meek. He's offside, though. And the flag goes up. You know, the initial 15, 20 minutes of the game, everybody's got a lot of energy. It'll be interesting to see how the midfield opens up as people get a little bit more fatigued and as the game stretches on. Uh, you know, we haven't been able to call Christian Soto's game as much. The boy against Kentucky he was just a force. Armas. Tevez and Miglietti really do hunt as a pack defensively and offensively, Jim. They do. And actually, both teams are doing a great job of attacking what we call the second ball, which is after that first touch, they're right there. RSU is doing a great job of this. Let's use that as well. Hafferty going to take his space now. Crespo hits a long diagonal ball. Walker goes up for it. Amanda can't get the second ball. Meek and Sailor and Tevis. He's got Ostrom racing ahead up the left side. Sends it out wide for him. Ostrom cuts it back nicely there. Slips it back inside. Tevez fires and it's blocked by a charging Fernandez. That was a great uh, stop on the part of the goal. I mean, that was just perfect. Um, because if he hadn't come out, I think that would have been a goal. He made himself big and just got right in the way, and that's exactly what you're supposed to do. Great job. Well, the interplay there between Tevez and Ostrom, those are two players who really clearly understand one another, Jim. Well, that's one of the advantages the Huskies have. They, they, you know, they did lose three pretty important players, but... But they also have retained quite a few, and so they do know what to expect. Trying Scardina there, it won't go. Armas looking to spring the counter. Mondi gets past Soto, is brought down, and will win the free kick. Yeah, you might you might have called that a, a good professional foul right there. <laughs> Yeah, they're giving up a free kick, but better that than a two on one at the top of the box. Jeff all over the ball. It's a low driven effort. Comes right back to him. Crespo. That has a lot of backspin. Initial header. One by Washington. Now Ostrom's trying to dribble free, but it's another turnover. Right in the corner for possession. And Ostrom wins the battle. Ball's behind Miglietti. 
Checks it right back to him. Gone ahead for Meek here. Meek trying to pick out Scardina. Broken up by Jabert. It'll stay in play. Joel Walker. Sparing his own blushes there. Another near turnover, and Crowley going to be called for the foul off the ball. Right as Christian Soto was picking up that loose ball and headed for the left alley. The Huskies are starting to uh, get a little bit more you know, effective on their attacking uh, charges. Still no real good shots on goal yet. Yeah, only real one to speak of. The effort from Molliner down there that was stopped by Fowler at the near post and that great charging save from Fernandez to deny Tevez on the low angle. Sticks a foot in, breaks it up. Soto finds Miglietti. The return. Miglietti lunges in there. Gives away the free kick on the far side. I believe is Gail Schaber who's going to stay down. Paulo Street calling for a stop on the clock. Jaber on his feet now. Looks like he'll be fit to continue. Back underway, courtesy of Adrian Crespo. for Jafal. He is hounded by Crowley and is fouled by him. Yeah, there's a lot of hand checking on the part of Jafal that I'm wondering whether that's going to come back at some point to be a foul on him because he was definitely pushing off the clear space. He picks that ball away. Doesn't have much in the way of support. Now finds Crowley. Ostrom. Wide for Lucas Meek. Low cross. Broken up by Hafferty. And Armas. Going to try to knock it into space. Fowler way off his line. And volleys that toward the far touch line. He didn't want to see if that was going to drop in for Gloria Amanda. And, and actually, that's, you know, initially I looked and went, wow, why is he out at the 35, 40 yard line? That was actually a really smart play. Uh, of course, the key is to get to the ball, <laughs> which he did. <laughs> Soto. His through ball picked up by Hafferty. Tia Molliner. You can definitely see the skill level of the OSU players with the ball at their feet. They are not at all panicked. They don't mind turning back, and you know that's the mark of having that skill level that you know, being an international player. You have to manage that. Obviously, possession, Jim, not officially a tracked stat at the NCAA level as Meek blocks that attempted clearance. Burks brings it down. Soto. And OSU has it right back, which 
allows me to finish out my point. It really feels like Oregon State's been on the ball for most of 80% of this match. I would say that's probably true. And right now, the Huskies are 11 behind the ball. So, as long as they can remain organized. It's behind Jeffel. Here's Joel Walker. Walker's cross. Broken up by Sailor before he can drop in. And Scardina on the move. Now the give and go. Broken up there nicely by Javert. Mondi out wide. Risco forces him back. Yeah, Briscoe being one of those freshmen that uh, Coach Clark had identified as, as a person to watch. This is great experience for him, you know, playing against a high-level, you know, top-ranked team. And he's holding himself up quite well. Soto gone down. Not very much in that from TM, but Soto perhaps realizing there was enough contact on his back and his stature occasionally inclined to allow referees to give him the benefit of the doubt as he wins the free kick. side. Ostrom. Meek. Meek wanted to go quickly for Tevez. We'll see our first change of the match. And Imanol Rosala is going to check in for Washington. Rosala's also scored against Gonzaga. Had that game winner. Only need seven minutes to record it. Now the Mexican Youth International steps onto the field for Washington. Yep, giving Lucas Meek a, a break. Tiam, quite complete turn. Great poise there by Bristol, despite the high pressure. You see the wind, Jim, just have to get the touch completely right. The ball's going to come off the pitch. Yeah, for the Huskies, when they hit a long ball, it's being held up by the In the second half, uh, you know, the opposite will be the case. The eternal game of inches for how far down the field you can wander before the referee will force you to move back for a throw-in. distribution from Fernandez. Tiam gets it back for the Beavers. For the most part, this one has been played exactly in the middle part of the middle third of the field. It really hasn't been one end to the other. It's not that, that often. All right, head for Walker. Rolled out. Migliati <laughs> trying to run through a couple of challenges. He's pulled down here. And uh, Armas has words first for him and now for the referee. Here's that physical toughness we were talking about earlier. He's a, he's a tough, hard nosed player, likes physical contact. Right? It's a bit like trying to tackle a rugby player in the open field. Right. 
<laughs> oh, the better foot spot. down, but Crowley's right there. He'll poke it over the top. Fernandez content to let it bounce to his feet. He's pressing a little higher right now. Tiam has a chance to get to this ball. He does. His cross comes behind Amanda. Oh, Jim, that might have been the moment for the Beavers so far here in these first 35 minutes. Yeah, Charlie Ostrom showing great poise to bring the ball down and make a good distribution instead of just pounding it. Tevez carrying on here into the right alley. His cross disrupted. Well defended by Crespo. And here come the Beavers once more. Now it's Armas, and too much on that ball into space. Well, 35 and change gone here at Husky Soccer Stadium. No score between the Washington Huskies and the Oregon State Beavers. A word to those of you tuning in at home that the game clock you see at the top of your screen is an estimation. Official time, of course, is kept separately down at the scorer's table. And we'll do our best to keep you apprised of any difference that arises between those clocks. You'll notice the referees all have masks on. Uh, we were uh, told that you should keep the mask on, but it's sort of optional as to whether or not you want to play an actual whistle or an electronic whistle. In the previous game uh, that we called, it was an electronic whistle, very hard to hear. Uh, so you'll notice that uh, the center today has an actual whistle and pulled his mask on. So. Molitor. Looking for the ball into the alleyway, Ostrom. Interposes himself. Head toward Miglietti. Back heel back in. And Scardina moving through, screaming for the ball. Now it comes his way. He's on side, but the ball gets beyond him. And rolls with the touch. That was so close for uh, Scardina. It was a, a, a good attempt on Charlie Joseph's part. Just a little bit too long. Oregon State very happy with that. ball from Hafferty. Joel Walker gone after it. Ostrom, his header lets him down there. Walker racing ahead. Tiam is in here. And it's blocked out expertly by Kai Briscoe. Yeah, Kai Briscoe is having a heck of a game so far. That was a that was a critical stop because uh, Sam Fowler is coming out. It'll be Jeffel to knock in this ball from the far corner. Substitutes waiting for both sides now. Jeff lands a low ball, whipped into the area. And out for another corner. in, skipped off the head of Burks, it's gone out, I believe it'll be another corner, and it will. Corner 
this is where that wind can really create a problem. The ball goes up and somebody misjudges it because the wind moves it you know, six inches in the air. It can really throw you off. The wind really got a hold of that one. Crespo gets a hold of it as well. And that will end up in a goal kick. And the first change now for the visitors, Siki Sabaleng. Going to check on Joel Walker, it appears. And Kalani Kosorienzi coming on for Washington. And it comes for Scardino. Coach Clark trying to keep his outside attacking mids as fresh as possible. Lower ball from Fowler this time. Helped along by Crowley. Flipped on by Miglietti, and that falls for Tevez. The ball's taking him wide. Tevez picks up, looks to distribute. Cuts it back. Shot toward goal, and a snap save by Fernandez. Emmanuel Rosales was his first effort of the night on frame. And after the fact, I'm sure he wished he had gotten a little bit more on that. But uh, still, made the, made the uh, keeper make a save, and that's, that's his second of the night. Molliner, Sabaleng, back for Hafferty. And that ball, too long at the touch. Also going to bring on Jason Baca. Sophomore out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And Fowler gonna fall on that ball. wide, Ostrom combining with Rosales. Beavers have it back. And Fowler did a nice job on, on that one as well as an earlier one, keeping it down underneath the wind, which is hard to do. Uh, Miss clear, it's there, falls for Tevez, Saint Fernandez, another massive save. Again, an amazing ability to hang on to that ball. That's, uh, that's one at either end. Fowler showing at his end that he wasn't going to give up the rebound, and boy, that was a great save right there. Well, the press for Washington nearly pays off in a big way in the 43rd minute there, Jim. And Fernandez, like you said, doing so much not to spill that rebound, that ball had a wicked spin on it. Yeah. Chops his towards Rosales. Hafferty got into space. It came off Costa Rienzi. Armas. Sabale. Here's an example of a shorter player just canceling somebody out on the net. You know, it's one of those things that you know, people say, oh, I'm not tall enough to compete for the header. Well, you, you, you can compete for it and make sure that the other player doesn't get it. He may not win it, but he won't even. Soto, gone down the line, nothing doing. Is 
45th minute of play here as the announcement rings through Husky Soccer Stadium Soto Ostrom your side for Rosales Rosales knocks it away And that one will go through for a goal kick. Now, Terry Boss is upset with Chip Hollow Street because the ball came off the referee, Jim, but play was not stopped. Now, can you talk to us about how that law change has been affected and how Chip Hollow Street, in your eye, might have interpreted there as a licensed referee or so? You know, it's, uh, it, the, the rule is if it hits you, it's supposed to be a drop ball, period. Um, and uh, so it, it is still a judgment call on the part of the referee. So perhaps he thought that it you know, didn't change possession or whatever, but. Oh, Terry might have had a point there. Well, thankfully, any further controversy avoided as the chance itself came to naught. Just seconds to go here as Fernandez will put this back in play. <laughs> Under 10 to play. Ball skip back with Fernandez. Just going to scoop this up. So 45 minutes played, no goals from either side, but some close chances both ways as we head to the break. Jim, your thoughts on this first 45 minutes? It's a very competitive match. Two really good teams, uh, you know, longer, you know, and so you have to play for that. Uh, I, I also think that the big thing will be what goes on in the match. Because so far, it's been, the last 15, 20 minutes, there was more open play in the midfield, but the first, the first 30 minutes, there wasn't much at all. So we'll see. Uh, pretty much both teams have their original starting 11s back out there to start the second half. I'll let you know if there are any updates to that. Here's Miglietti coming inside. And the ball had gone out of play on the near touchline. That's Oregon State throwing. Oh, it actually looks like it's a kick. Pardon me. So the AR must have called them. Fortunately, that's not at the part of the day. We don't actually have clear vision. Glory, Amanda. Back to Hafferty. Mundy on the near side. One way by Miglietti. And one right back by Molitor. Oregon State starting out uh, stretching the field width and thereby opening up passing lanes. Something they uh, did with some success in the first half. Siki and Sabaling. Unable to keep that ball in play on the far touch line. Punts it away from Lucas Meek. Kai Briscoe. Gone down the line towards Scardina. Here's Chabert. Just the slightest mislaid pass from Chabert that sparked probably the best chance of the half, Jim. Allowed Tevez in one on one. Fernandez made a fantastic solo effort to stop it. Mundy upended by Kai Briscoe, a beautiful slide tackle. I would say Briscoe's having the game <laughs> of all the defenders so far. That was a great tackle. Ball finds Tevez out wide. Tevez searching diagonal ball, easily dealt with by Fernandez. Well, worth mentioning that Briscoe, you know, obviously Sounders Academy, yes, but also used to playing at a very high level, has seen time in the USL Championship, the men's second division of professional soccer. Of course, academy prospects eligible to play in the USL until they report for their first collegiate season. And after that, they can no longer join those teams for official competition. But 
Briscoe, one of a number of players, actually Miglietti and Tevez alongside him, as well as Fowler, all who have received professional, so to speak, experience, even though they weren't getting paid for it and retained their amateur eligibility. Again, Oregon State's poise on the ball is, is very impressive, as you would expect from a highly ranked team. I'd like to see the Huskies um, spread the spread the width of the field more in the air. Right now, the entire Husky squad is on one half vertically of the field. Mondi does well to get that ball away from Briscoe. A big touch, Briscoe recovering. Now shoulder to shoulder into the alleyway they go. Mondi tackled away by Briscoe. Boy, I could watch 90 minutes of just those guys running at one another. Game. That was a good uh, call on the part of the AR when pushing the back there on Miglietti. Gio looking at him going, huh? He waved his flag. Kick awarded just shy of midfield. Kendall Burks lining up over the ball. Slices it to the left side and clear out of play. Not quite what he had in mind, I'm sure. Second time tonight Burks has had uh, an issue like that. I mean, he's so good at breaking down balls coming over the top. He, I don't think I've seen him lose a header he's contested so far this season for Washington. But right now, that distribution to the left side just not quite working. Jim, is there anything to that, or is he just having a bad night? Well, you know, it's hard to say. I think, you know, don't forget there's a lot of wind up there, and so he's trying to put maybe a little too much extra on the ball to, to get it there. Just overhit it. Jeffrey. A touch too much from Jeff Will Burks pops it up, settling underneath it, and he is undercut. Fowler going to pick it up as a light rain has just picked up just in time for the start of this half. So now it's cold. Now it's going to be wet. And Jim, that's going to take what's probably been a pretty refined game and create more chances for uh, something to slip through. Right. It, it may also, however, um, you know, uh, cut the wind down a little bit. So be interesting to see but clearly the ball will skid I mean the footing will be a little bit uh, more of an issue Ostrom thrown toward the corner Meek is there Clarence can't get past Soto. Comes off the heel of Miglietti. Meek turns. It's a loose ball. And before the shot is taken, a free kick going the other way. Beavers player down inside the penalty area. That appears to be Jaber. Second time tonight he's been down. And Miglietti getting a talking to. No cards through the first 45 and now 52 minutes of play. I think the referee's done a really good job. This game could very easily uh, get out of control. He's right on it. Um, yeah. Giving players talking to when it's appropriate. Amanda tied up by Burks. Now Mondi, TM calling for it ahead. Comes inside, he's undercut Sailor. TM's cross blocked by a sliding Ryan Saylor out for a corner. There's an example of a great senior defender. He knew what was going on there. He knew he couldn't get back to just keep his feet and block the shot. So he went down and blocked it. And had he not, that would have been a very dangerous opportunity. A great combination play on, on the part of Morris Hugh to get it up there. So now Sophia and Jeffel to take the corner. Low ball driven in. Couple bodies on the deck. Tevez 
can only get it as far as Crespo who will recycle to Hafferty. Hafferty wants to send this in quickly. And Jeff will going to be flagged for offside here. One thing I've noticed about Jeff, well, he's quite a gifted player, but he does tend to drag the ball a little bit. And, you know, in, in the Pac-12, you take three or four or five touches, you're going to lose it. And so it'll be interesting to see as the season progresses whether that's something that uh, he does less of. And certainly what he was, whatever he was doing last year worked out for him. Three goals, six assists for the Beavers. Miglietti brought down, another free kick. And uh, Miglietti made sure that one got called, but his, an arm did get wrapped around his head there. And this gym kind of right on the edge of that sweet spot for what the Huskies can serve in, especially with Charlie Ostrom, who's lined up as the left-footed option. Crowley the right. Yeah, this is uh, that part of the field that I think is so dangerous because a good, a good weighted ball that comes in somewhere between the, the penalty spot and six. Ostrom, all oh, the wind took that one. Burks can't get the header at the back post. And it's gone out of play for a corner. Huskies are fortunate on that one. I think the idea there was to, was to knock it to the line and then hit it back across the ball now. Unfortunately, Burks could, you know, again, that wind carried it a little too far. Tevez lined up for the in-swinging corner. The ball dealt with the near post. Now a foot race. Sailor loping backward. It gets beyond Crowley. Gloria Amanda cuts it into space on the left side. Here's Tion. Poked through, and the run was just held up by Gloria Amanda. He keeps sprinting there. He might have been on the end of that ball. Though I should say, in his defense, it did look like the play was moving completely at the opposite direction. First touch from him, Jaber deals it away, and it's out for a corner. Well, there's an example of Meek's pure hustle creating uh, a chance for the Huskies. Most of the time, people would have just let that ball bounce, but no, he's going after it. As a result, the Oregon State defender has to make a play and unfortunately can't control it to, to knock it out to touch. So, Tevez once more. Gardina comes right back to Tevez. His second effort to the back post. Too high for Kendall Burks, who was lurking. Well, Huskies definitely are, are being the more threatening team, at least in the first few minutes of this half. Um, you do wonder whether the wind is helping them quite a bit. Jeffel into space. Here's Mondi. Scardina coming over. Well, Scardina did enough to disrupt the ball, and then Soto got out of the way from him. Right. Yeah, Scardina's pace is quite impressive. He's uh, he's a lot faster than I think people give him credit for. Jiber, down the line toward Tian. Glory Amanda. Amanda, taking up space here. Fires for goal, it gets past Fowler, and a screamer from 30 yards out is the opening goal here in the 58th minute. OSU leads 1-0. Now 
Mark got five goals for Oregon State, and Oregon State now has the advantage. Well, that's just a thunderous effort from Gloria Amanda. And realistically, that was the first time he actually had the ball at his feet. I mean, we haven't called his name hardly at all. If that if that run had come to nothing, I was going to say, wow, we haven't seen too much from Gloria Amanda tonight. Well, we've certainly seen plenty now. 1-0 Oregon State as this game gets back underway. And now the Huskies playing from behind. Jim, it looked like there was a moment of miscommunication right as Amanda was racing toward the edge of the penalty area. The two center backs, Saylor and Burks, seemed to get confused over who was going to step up and take him. They both stepped away, and that was all Amanda needed. I think that's exactly right. Oregon State smelling blood in the water, perhaps. They slide it through. Amanda trying to get to the end of it. Briscoe tripped up there. That'll be a free kick coming out. Well, at the level that Pac-12 soccer's played at, that's all it takes, one misstep. Oregon State, a fantastic finish by Gloria Amanda. 1-0. Here's Meek up the left side. Crossed in, won't reach Miglietti. It's loose. Fernandez goes to ground. Still loose. Has that rolled in? Yes, it's a goal. Washington have equalized. And again, you know, I, I hate to continue to sing Meek races but boy you know, he dragged the ball in there and, and you know, wasn't a beautiful play or anything but it, it created some issues and the ball was banging around and suddenly the ball trickles into the net now we have an equalizer within a couple of minutes of what was a world-class goal well in the official scores book just a minute's different 58th minute one nil 59th one one Well, that's the kind of response that you want to see as a as a as a head coach, you know, because it's obvious when the other team scores, especially on a thunderous shot like that, it's easy to kind of rest back on your heels and look right after it. That is Miglietti getting the credit for the goal. A number of bodies just throwing themselves at that ball on the ground, including Adrian Fernandez, who stopped again the initial effort, but for the first time tonight was unable to corral the loose ball. So now, Jim, I have to ask, in your experience, when you see a goal like that, a potential massive momentum changer, and then literally seconds later, the equalizer down the other end, does the game tend to settle back into what it was before, or does something tend to change about the game state? Actually, I think what happens is the game, now that you've sort of broken the ice, the game opens up. I think there's going to be heightened intensity in both teams' places, both teams' parts, rather. Uh, you know, to, to, you know, score another one, take the goal. Throwing comes in, Scargina heads it along. Scooped overhead. Here's Crowley. His ball's on the ground. It's knocked away. I think that was Armas that got the first foot to it for Oregon State. Ostrom's long throw. Scardina. Muscled off the ball by... Jafal. And the Huskies can't keep it in.
can see now from our perch in the broadcast area that Imanol Rosales is set to return for the Washington Huskies. Kind of got lost in all the confusion of that goal, but Joel Walker has also returned for Oregon State, replacing Siki Sabale. Forgive me, he came on for TM as this is Sabaling right here who loses out on possession but wins the free kick. Yeah, it was a handball. Briscoe arguing that his hand was in a natural position, but it was out away from his body. Well, Jim, with the changes made to the handling laws in recent years, I've just stopped asking people to, to weigh in on it. I can't make heads or tails of it anymore. Mondi, Jeffel over the ball. Crespo drifting in. It'll be Jeffel. Curled in. The ball's loose. Sabalang puts it over the bar. Oh, had it right at his feet and wasn't able to get his weight over the ball. Yeah, real shame for him. I mean, he really had the ball at his feet. It's one of those things that you, you know, you, you probably push yourself and, and, and could have taken a little bit more time. Uh, just, to, just to get it on frame. Rosales has returned for Washington. Scardina is off. That is Rosales. Miglietti. And a free kick gone the other way. Rosales committed the foul while winning the ball. I think Oregon State is continuing to do a better job of stretching the width of the field and opening up passing lanes. And this this half, they're being more successful with stringing together give and goes uh, up the sidelines and that kind of thing as a result of that. Crespo. Mondi on the near side. Uh, Mondi, just fun to watch. The ball magnetic at his feet, Jim. Yeah, no, he's very gifted, as so many of the Oregon State players are. The ball plays it short. that in. Meek is there and he's onside and his cross drops in toward Rosales. Soto races forward, snaps a shot at goal. It's blocked. Still loose in the penalty area. Appeals for what I believe is a handball. I should say I believe the appeals were for a handball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the judgment on that as that to the men wearing green shirts who are much closer to the action than I am. Little green red. Well, uh, again, if this was VAR, it would be a totally different thing. But this is college soccer. Kalani Cosa Rienzi is coming for Kai Briscoe. Placing him at right back. Jaffel. really see that often when Charlie Ostrom just you know knocks it up the field just to clear it out that's what happened on that play normally the Huskies are pretty good at, at uh, stringing their clearances direct to someone again look at the spacing on Oregon State's part you know used to call it 
people can chomp on your heels if you're the outside mids. They're doing that. This is Molliner up the far side. Cuts inside, lays off for Crespo. Amanda retreats to the ball. Hafferty, turned wide by Molliner. Nicked away from Joel Walker, but out for the throw. Looking for Jeffel. Sailor. Brings it out to the edge of the defensive third. OSU back in control. Crespo, dangerous looking ball. Headed by Sailor. Burks deals it away. Miglietti turns it wide. Crespo intercepts. Armas. Fowler off his line and catches it cleanly. He's going to go quickly. That's a nice job on his part to find Meeks right away. And this is Lucas Meek, still carrying on. His cross for Miglietti over his head. Miglietti calling for somebody pushing him in the back, which, which happened. Sabaleng. Doesn't like his options. Goes back from Mondi. Hafferty drifting to the far side. Ball comes his way. He got frozen by that pass. Ball had eyes a little bit. This pitch might have been tough to read. Well, we did note in the first half that here that Oregon State had, had more than possession. It's clearly the case in the last 10 or 15 minutes of this half. Um, and they're, again, because they're doing a good job of spreading the field, they've got lots of choices in terms of angles and triangles for passing. They're using them. Chris Myers, the first year out of Sacramento, California, on to the pitch now for the Washington Huskies. 70th minute, 1-1. Between Oregon State and Washington. Oregon scored 58th minute. Washington responded one minute later. Knocked into space, Cosarienzi. His ball drifting in. Hafferty cuts it out. Here's Ostrom. Slip through. Meek is offside. And close thing, too. This is a nice idea, unfortunately, just out in front. But you'd rather see that than not, not being so far up the pitch that you, you, you can't put together a meaningful attack. Slicing ball coming near side and held in by Mondi. Jeffel. Armas. Now the switch to Hafferty. Walker is there. So is Charlie Ostrom. He wins out. Sutherland. Poked ahead toward Glory Amanda. Amanda going at Burks. Steps top side. Shoots and beats foul to the near post. 2 1. Amanda's on a brace. And again, I, I 
can't help but fault the keeper in that. He was not ready for that shot. He wasn't expecting it. He wasn't down. And set. You know, again, tremendous skill and tremendous power in the shot. All, you know, all plummets to, to him. But, uh, wow. Larry Amanda entered the night as the Pac-12's leading scorer. Now six goals in four matches for him. You have to imagine he'll end the night as its leading scorer. The only question is what will the final score line of this match be? Washington looking for another quick response. Collision at the edge of the area. Not enough for a free kick. Jamie Clark is incensed on the touchline. Now you would imagine that uh, Oregon State's going to do everything they can to uh, eat up clock. Game management being what it is. Soto cut down from behind. Free kick given. We're going to let Ostrom take this. Ostrom, long floated ball, headed by Jeffel, and Jeffel finishes the clearance. Fowler, driven ball, flick on towards Scardina, who's checked back in. Amakiam. Waiting to check back in at the next appropriate stoppage for Oregon State. Soto. Now a floated ball. Float out of play for a goal kick. Joel Walker coming back off. Washington wins the ball away and commits a foul in the process. Lucas Meek thought he'd done enough to win the ball cleanly. Little high five to Joe Hafferty. No hard feelings. Again, Meek, that uh, deceptive defensive skill of his. He just does not give up. Oregon State, pretty uh, fortunate that, that one didn't. That, that that got called. Five minutes gone, 15 left to go. Oregon State leading the reigning Pac-12 champs. Washington 2-1, to one, thanks to a brace from Gloria Amanda. Moliner does enough to win a throw-in for his side. Yeah, you, don't, you don't really see as much energy out of the Huskies that you might otherwise see right now. It's, it's a little bit uh, languid. Um, you wonder what it's going to take for them to kick it up a notch because they're going to have to if they're going to get the equalizer. Ball goes through. Soto chops his man down. Penalty given. Christian Soto committed 
on the loose ball. And Moliner paid a hefty price, but now Sam Fowler going to be asked to step up. Some discussion about who's going to take it. Glory Amanda was talking to Jeffel saying, come on, let me go for the hat trick. Jeffel going to see if he can try to put this game on ice. Whistle goes. Jeffel skies it over the bar. Had a chance to put this one likely out of doubt with under 15 left to go, Jim. And was unable to do so. Yeah, you know, I actually like the short uh, run up, I mean, the, the one step run up. But boy, you got to put it on frame. You know, <laughs> you know, get it on frame. So, uh, boy, the Huskies duck one because if they can score, they equalize. If that had gone in, then you pretty much could say goodnight. Jim, if you're Glory Amanda, the next time you have a quiet word with Jeff, do you, do you have a quick I told you so? I'm not so sure it would be such a quiet word, you know. Scardina racing forward, ball knocked away from him. Chiver upended, wins the free kick. Well, that's the kind of intensity that the Hustlers are going to have to show if they're going to get back into this match. You know, Scardina going all the way from his right outside mid position to the left sideline. Ball nearly fell for Tiam. And a free kick at the edge of the defensive third. <clears throat> Substitution, despite the horn, not allowed at this stoppage of play. Fowler sends downfield. Falls through. Ostrom is there. His ball chopped back inside. Soto gets a foot to it. Can't bring it down. Now Tyrone Mondi tries to knock it into space. Able to get his own rebound. Taken off the ball hard by Burks, but fairly. Nearly played through for Scardina in space there. Mondi passed a sliding sailor and too long. With Sabalay on the far side into the hands of Fowler. Another long ball from Fowler. Scrum for the ball now. And another foul called against Washington. Yeah, I think the, uh, the Huskies' intensity is, uh, is working against them, and the Oregon State players are there sensing any kind of a touch at all or going to go down a little bit easier now with uh, 12 minutes left in the match and up by goal. TM loses out on the ball in the air. Crespo smacks that straight out of play. That's going to allow Gio Miglietti and Tyler Smith to come on for Washington. They're going to replace Crowley and Scardina. This is the first we've seen of Smith this evening. 5'8", senior out of Spokane, Washington. Smith goes to Ostrom with his first touch of the game. Ostrom has to slide to recover his own ball. Smith cuts it out wide. Meek is there. Meek tried to attack. Couldn't get past Moliner, who recovered quite well defensively. Washington going to throw numbers forward now. And it's one away by the Beavers. Crespo takes over. 
80 minutes gone now from Husky Soccer Stadium. Washington Huskies, the reigning Pac-12 champions, currently trailing 2-1 at home in their seat, well, their conference opener. To a very well-composed Oregon State team. Yeah, there's no there's no fluke about the fact that Oregon State is winning this game. You know, number one, they had um, Glory Amanda bury two thunderous goals. But they're also you know, dominating possession, they're organized, they're spreading the field. It's an impressive group. Big switch into space toward Cosarienzi. He brings it down well. Back inside from him and all. Rosales, Cosarienzi, wide left now. Meek chests it down toward the byline, tackled away and gone out for a corner. Well, you have to think for the Huskies that these are opportunities they can't afford to waste. Imanol Rosales will take the corner. And stoppage in play called for. Paulo Street, I think, wants to talk things over inside the penalty area, but is cognizant of where the clock is. He's done a nice job tonight on the match in terms of just controlling what could be a pretty chippy match. And now a secondary word. Rosales whips in a corner, headed back out toward him. Pulls the ball down. Cross on the ground, scoop toward goal! And it misses wide at the right post. Gonna stay in play, collected in the right alley. A secondary deflection. Could be loose, and it was cleared off the line. Fernandez finally pounces on the loose ball, and the Beavers escape the danger. Yeah, boy, that was uh, a couple of lucky breaks there for the Beavers. Uh, Huskies came very close. But again, you know, if they can create a few more of these corner kick opportunities, that's probably their best bet. Pressure coming on Burks and coming on Sailor. Nice job on the part of the Huskies to work that out of their back. Nicolietti back at midfield to recover this ball. Chop toward Costa Rienzi once more. That ball just jumped off Costa Rienzi's foot. Wasn't what he was expecting. Now Oregon State need to be thoughtful when they do get back on the ball, Jim, because Washington are going to swarm them with just seven minutes left. Well, now the, uh, the Beavers are just content of knocking around the back, uh, which is exactly what they're doing right now. Ball left in space, picked away by Smith. Rosales. Going to have to take it backward. Smith tried to turn it on the first touch. Miglietti recovers and wins the ball. Gives it right back to Crespo. Burks trying the left side. Now he's got the weight of it down. Ostrom runs through the first challenge. Skips inside past the second and wins the free kick on advantage. That was a good call on the part of the ref. He, he definitely fouled him, but he wanted to see if he could continue with the balls. And now he's moving it back. Ostrom lined up over this kick. Low driven ball. Crespo has it skiff off his shin. Tiam is there. Bumped by Smith. Poked toward the alley and out of play for a Washington throw-in. 
was a nice job on Smith's part to compete for that ball. Um, you know, body, side by side body challenge and came out with the ball. Long throw tipped away by Fernandez. Ostrom fires for goal. I think he hit his own teammate. Across Rienzi, trying to float it back over the top. Hafferty a foot to it. Then flicked away. That time by Armas. And now trying to play it into space. Here's Tiam doing battle with Cosa Rienzi, who beats him to the ball and is knocked down in the process. But Chapalo Street's happy with it. A bit of physical contest between these two teams. Not particularly dirty one by any stretch of the imagination. Not at all, Bruce. You know, like I said, I think, uh, I think Jamal Street has done a really nice job of controlling the chipping on that. Here's Sabale. He won the penalty earlier. Cuts to the byline. Fowler tips that one wide. Nice shot. It's a good save by Fowler. Wow. Substitution called for for Joel Walker. Of course, they'll take their time getting to him. Walker waved on now. Siki Sabling trotting off the near side. Clock continuing to run here. Oregon State, despite the short time in the clock, look like they're going to take this corner the old-fashioned way. Chopping that ball in. Fowler gives chase to the back post. That ball finds purchase. Costa Rienzi loses out. The shot blocked. The second effort. Amanda just swung wildly at it but couldn't connect. Hafferty. Smashes it back downfield. Turns it over to Washington. He's going to have to throw numbers forward now. Ball scooped out of play. Back over to OSU. So OSU taking its time. Game management. This is part of the maturity of what it takes to see out a game, especially at the NCAA level, where there is a fixed amount of time that a match can last. Tevez, dispossessed. Knocked into space. Fowler is there. A reminder that the clock at the top of your screens is an unofficial clock. Proper game time kept between the center referee and the scorer's table. Meek. Moving ahead, shouldered off the ball, and given the free kick. Okay, well, this is a very important opportunity for the Huskies. They have got to put a shot on net on this if they want a chance of getting an equal line. Because they may not get another opportunity. Ostrom, the lone man over the free kick. Pretty much the entire Washington team in or within five yards of the penalty area. Sam Fowler past midfield. Ostrom drives that ball in over the head of Miglietti. Get out as far as Fowler. Driven ball this time. Fernandez calling for it. And Fowler fouled back near midfield after the ball had gone away. Ticking toward the 90th minute now. And Ostrom lining up to take this free kick. They play it short to Ostrom. He drives that one forward. Flick toward goal. Loose inside the penalty area. Bodies on the ground, and Oregon State wins a free kick coming out the other way. Hard collision in there as everybody was throwing everything they could at that ball. And I believe it is Jaber for the third time this evening down on the ground as Chapalo Street calls for the clock to stop. Boy, uh, rough night for the French center back. Yeah, 
Um, hard to say. Didn't see it. And they are going to wave the training staff on for him. And now wave them off. Jaber says he's fit to can train you. Now, technically, Jim, the trainer did come on to attend to him. Even if he didn't receive medical attention, does he still have to leave the pitch? Yes. I believe he does. And forgive me, it is not Shaber. I believe it is Moliner who went down on that last one and is coming off under his own power, although favoring a leg. Looks like they want to bring Siki Sabalang back on for the injured Moliner. The clock is stopped. Fernandez strikes the ball. Came off Jeffel Washington's throw in. Quickly taken toward Miglietti. His header into the middle. Nobody on the receiving end. Sailor bumps it forward. Goes past Meek. And we're told now that there's officially one minute remaining. So the last 60 seconds of play here at Husky Soccer Stadium. This ball could fall. Soto, pardon me. Cosa Rienzi doesn't come square to it. And in a weird way, and his uh, errant shot almost fell straight to the foot of Miglietti. He might have been offside. Right. But would have had a chance for the redirect. That's true. Now Fernandez can run as much of this minute off the clock as he possibly can. Tend to just kick it out of bounds. The countdown is on. Well, Jamie Clark said he thought Oregon State could be a problem for any team in the conference, including his Washington Huskies. They've proven that. They walk off winners in the Pac-12 conference opener for both teams, 2-1, thanks to a brace from the hottest scorer in the Pac-12 right now, Gloria Man.